here are the differences between European and US model W210s. So some of this information may be pre facelift and facelift specific, but mostly should still apply. The biggest difference in the front is the lack of side markers. So we'll see that the side panel right here is completely smooth. Whereas on a US car, we will have a side marker. So normally these front impact strips on the pre facelift cars will have a cutout for the European license plates. Whereas on the face of cars, they do not. And on US impact strips for the pre facelift they do not. We just drill holes in our bumpers here. So on the face of cars, this impact strip on the side will go all the way. This will not be here. This chrome will go all the way and this will just be smooth. And on the face of the bumper was always smooth. You just had to drill holes in the bumper if you want to mount a front plate. If your car was optioned with Xenon headlights, that means you had auto leveling. This was true for both US and European cars and you had the headlight washer system usually. In the European market, you can order the halogen lights with manual leveling. So you had a vacuum line and adjuster inside the car to move it. The US never got the manual leveling. So in the US, we just had halogen lights and that was it. So European cars, you can get the manually leveling halogen lights. And the switch to move it would be right next to the headlight switch. It'd be right here and it'll be a wheel that you turn. Another European thing too, is that when the lights are on and the fog light is on, we are able to leave the high beam on. On a US car, when you turn the high beams on, it turns off the fog lights. So that is another European option. This is an option that you can code into your car if you have a star computer. European cars are also able to have the fire extinguisher. In the US, this was not an option that you were able to order. Pre-facelift Euro cars had the side marker on the fender. This was mandated in the European market. The US never got this on the pre-facelift cars. It was on the facelift that we got the side indicators on the mirror. The glass on the mirror is also different as well. We'll see that this has that kind of bubbled out portion on the outside. So this is for the kind of blind spot mirror. This is called the aspherical mirror and I did a whole video on this. So if you're interested to find out more, please check it out. But on the US mirror, this would just be the same mirror all across. We would not have that portion that kind of bubbles out. Another difference between the European market cars and US cars is the standard options. So on US market cars, our standard options usually were the tow alarm, we have the, obviously had to have the lock and unlock for the doors, hazard switch, and the rear headrest coming down. US cars always came center with this automatic climate control. On the Euro cars, they had the knobs with the manual climate control. Euro cars also had different options. So this one has the folding mirrors. So a fully optioned car in the US would only have the sunshade and the parking sensors, which would go right here. So here's how the folding mirrors work. I have to push and hold the button and the mirror will fold right in. And that'll be both sides. And if I push the opposite direction, they will fold out. So a fully optioned US car would have heated seats like this, Xenon lights, and my car is missing the cooled seats. It would have command navigation. We never got the ADS suspension here. So the only option I'm missing is the parking sensors as well as the cooled seats, but that would be a fully optioned US car. European cars had the folding mirrors as well as the ADS option, which we did not get. Another Euro option that this car has is the motion sensors for the interior. So if you were to leave your windows down and lock the car and it detects motion inside, it will set off the alarm. This was not an option available in the US. Euro cars obviously had kilometers for the speedometer. So on the US, we always have miles per hour. And another difference too, is when you put the key in on a European car, there is no chime. On the US cars, we always had the chime. So we also see that the temperature and the mileage and the time is all to European specification. So here is a US car, we'll see everything's in miles an hour. And if we put the key in, there is a chime. So obviously on the US car, it is to US spec. So miles an hour, Fahrenheit, and we got the AM, PM and the time. We can change this in the settings how we're on a face of car with the digital speedo. So here we can adjust the clock if we want the 12 or 24 hour clock, temperature on the outside and the miles and the language as well. So European cars were also lower from the factory. So this is an AMG. So this has the AMG suspension. So this is already a little bit lower, but a AMG US car is a lot higher than this. We'll see we have pretty much a one finger gap in the front. and pretty much no gap in the rear. So this is a very low car compared to a US car. So unfortunately, my car is a US car, but it does have the H&R spring. So it does kind of match more of the Euro height, but this would be significantly higher. I would be able to put my full fist in the rear. And the front was also just as bad. 
So this was to comply with the mandate that the car must be able to go over a curb from the front. European cars also had a different trunk. So we'll see that this trunk extends all the way out to the left and right sides of this US plate. This is obviously to accommodate the European plate. US cars were shaped to fit the US plate only, so it is a completely different trunk lid. The only way to change it is to change the entire trunk lid. This is not like a early 124 where you could just swap out the panel. Another difference is in the front glass, we will see there is no window to read the VIN number because it did not exist on a Euro car. On a US car, the window was right there. Another difference between US and Euro cars is that Euro cars will not have the tin section on top of the windshield. So this is all clear throughout. So we will see the European VIN actually has the chassis code in it. So this is WDB210072. So 210W210072 is a specific chassis. Whereas the US VIN number would not have the chassis at all. It would be just WDB and then some letters. So if this was a European VIN, mine would be reading 210070. So this being a European car had the warning triangle, which the US cars did not. However, the US cars did have a place to put them. So you just had to cut out your carpet right here and buy the clip that will go right here, buy the triangle and it will fit right here. And I also wanna point out that this car is a pre facelift Euro car and this has the correct pre facelift Euro triangle. I'll insert a picture of the correct facelift triangle which will go on my car if I had it. But being a Euro car, we got cooler options in the US. So you see we have the security trunk. So we got one, two, three different latches for the trunk. So this is an option not available in the US. So we will see here along the trunk, they do have the receiving latches alongside the main latch. So that is how the security trunk works. And it is much more difficult to close. And a standard trunk is just smooth. It's just that single latch in the center and it's much easier to close. Obviously throughout the car, there are different types of signage showing like correct pressures and measurements or type of stuff. So obviously, it is meant for the US measurement system, so we'll see it's in pounds per inch and miles an hour. And we'll see on the Euro car, it is all for the European market, so it's in kilometers. And, and instead of PSI, we're at bar, which of course uh, they did include the PSI as well, which is very nice. And it is in German. So those are some of the differences I was able to find between Euro and US cars. If you know something that I missed, please leave it below in the comment. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.